Hello everyone and welcome to the After OP Review Slash Thoughts on Valkyria Chronicles. As always, this is going to be like a relatively spoiler-free review, just kind of a uh, over ge general overview of how I thought about the game. I, I don't score it or anything like that. But yeah, let's get into it, because I really, really enjoyed this game for the unique little gem that it is. So the story is basically anime World War II is the easiest way to describe it. It takes place in like the fictional country of, I think it was Europa, which is basically Europe. It starts off, you're living, you're like boy living in idyllic country town and he's coming home and then all of a sudden the empire invades and he tears down the town and the giant windmill and it's a disaster. And it's up to our heroes to enlist in the militia to fight off the empire scum. It's a very cheesy story. It's got a lot of, like, anime moments, which is kind of a stark contrast to some of the dark themes that they do delve into, because obviously it is based on World War II, which is, like, some very dark themes, and they, they go there. They go there at times, but it never goes there for very long, you know what I mean? Like, for example, there's this one mission where the, the queen is kidnapped, and she's about to be taken away by the Empire. And you save her just in the nick of time, and it's like a dark moment for everyone. And then someone's like, I got cinnamon buns! Let's eat some cinnamon buns! And everyone's alright, they're like, wow, these are the best cinnamon buns I've ever had. What a delicious treat. I now declare this National Cinnamon Bun Day. So the overarching story is like, I, I enjoy it, but especially for its cheesy moments. But the characters are definitely a standout. They, they I think I enjoyed all of the side story missions. Probably even more than the regular missions, because they each delve into, like, the there's, like, five or six main characters, and each one of the side stories delves into the backstory of these characters, and they're definitely a highlight, definitely provide the cheesiest moments. There's not too much else to say about the story, other than it's, it's World War II, but anime, and occasionally they throw in, like, some ancient uh, death lasers from, histor like, ancient historic civilizations, which, you know... That didn't happen in World War II, but, you know, they gotta throw that in because it's anime. I really enjoyed, like, all the main characters, but you gotta go into this understanding that they're gonna be really tropey. Like, our main character, Welkin, is a absent-minded nature guy. Like, he loves nature, and he's super into bug collecting and all this sort of stuff. But then you have, like, the main female lead, and she just wants Senpai to notice her, but he's always so busy with his bug collection. You have, uh, you know big anti-tank guy with a heart of gold, uh, all these things. I mean, it's pretty tropey, but I will say I absolutely adored these characters. They were a fun group to basically uh, tag along in this very dark World War II themed game. <laughs> and when I say it gets dark, I mean, it, it does get dark at times, but it's almost always punctuated with like, kind of silly lightheartedness. Like at some point they're like, oh my God, the people on the opposing side are just people, too, living their day-to-day -day lives. Oh look, we got a pig on the team! I smell a new mascot character! So yeah, I, I enjoyed the story. It's, it's a fun little romp. I don't think it's the main focus of the game, though. I will say, what you guys probably noticed the second you started this video, if you've never played this game before, is this art style is gorgeous. Seriously, it's like a watercolor painting. I don't even know how to describe it, but... It is, like, not pushing the most polygons. It is not... I'm sure it's, like, not a technical showcase, but the art style is a technical showcase to me. And just seeing, like, the onomatopoeia of the comic book words flying up as, like, you're driving forward and you see, like, grrrr of the engine motor, and as you shoot enemies, you see, like, rat tat tat uh, It's all very stylish, and I... I th this part never gets old. The, the art style in this game is lovely and it is definitely a highlight for me. The sound design is also quite good, um, I, quite adequate. I really like a lot of the voice actors. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they're like top tier or anything, but it's mostly the writing of what some of these characters say that is just, just magnificent. And, and getting into the characters a little bit more, I, so all the members of your squad or troop are basically they're all, it's like Jade Alliance 2, right? They're all actual, like, written characters. They all have voice dialogue. They all have specific personalities. Now, the thing that bums me out is we don't get, like, a whole bunch of 
backstory into these characters. It's mostly like in the encyclopedia, like look at their character listing and they'll tell you it there. But you do get a fair amount just from like the things they say in combat because everyone has, every character has unique phrases that they'll say in battle and unique lines. And you can, uh, those are definitely the highlights. And you get a wide variety of characters, all with their likes and dislikes. Th that's kind of the interesting thing is when you're forming your squad, each one will like different things. Uh, not, not quite like a Jag Lions 2, I shouldn't say they like different things, but they have these things called potentials. And so the potentials are either a positive or negative buff, or basically a buff or a debuff depending on certain situations. So there's this one engineer called Dallas that really likes the main character girl, Alicia, and likes Aika. And so whenever she gets near them, she'll get a buff and she'll say something like, This is her own secret garden. It's our own secret garden. Uh, <laughs> which is so cheesy, I love it. And there's a bunch of stuff like that. Or maybe sometimes at the start of their turn, they'll shout a phrase like, I'm feeling super today, and they'll just do extra damage which is just awesome. It adds flavor. It's really the most, like, gameplay-wise, it's the most distinguishing feature of the characters, because honestly, it's kind of hard without the potentials to tell much of a difference between them, because they don't show you many of the behind-the-scenes numbers outside of HP. But, you know, I'm getting too much in the gameplay. Let's talk about what this gameplay is. And it is like a... Man, it's so interesting. It's, it's a tactical turn-based game, but it's, I've never played anything quite like it. So you see your map screen, right? And you deploy your units at the beginning, almost kind of like a Fire Emblem game. You build your squad of these units, you deploy them out, and then you have so many command points per turn. Like let's say you get 10 command points, and you can move one unit, and that takes one command point. But you can keep moving that same unit, and use, you, you could you could spend your entire turn moving one unit, but the, the drawback is that they don't get to move as far with each subsequent turn on your same, like, overall turn. Basically, you click them on the map, and it goes into this third-person view, and then you move them manually, like, almost like a third-person game, and they have a bar that designates, like, how far you can move, and once that bar is depleted, you can't move anymore, and in, in between there, you can take an you can take one action. You can shoot, you can like throw a grenade, or heal, or something like that. And then your turn's done. The thing that makes it interesting is the intercept fire mechanic, which is basically how units... It's basically there to keep offense being, you know, completely silly. Essentially, on your turn, once you get in the range of an enemy, and the same goes for you, the, en the unit will, that's not acting at the time, if they're facing in the right direction, will automatically start shooting at the person they see. And it's like brutal. This is the thing. Most of your objectives are offensive, so it mostly goes on the side of the uh, of the enemy. So you're usually on the receiving end of this, and if you're not careful, the intercept fire will just tear you to shreds. And so that's where like the tactical like move into position, get behind cover, gameplay come like comes in. It's just kind of cool how this could have been like a completely regular run of the mill game, but they let you like actually aim when you shoot and so it actually matters where you hit them like headshots do more damage and you have like a crosshair now i'm not gonna say don't get the impression and it, this is almost what i got don't get the impression this is, that this is like a third person shooter by any means because it's really deceiving in that regard in fact in a lot of ways the crosshair is kind of like they could have just told me like which body part do you want to aim at and it's like the head okay i'll shoot the head because everything freezes, you don't get intercept fired when you're, like, in crosshair mode. But I think it doesn't matter. It could have been all done with a menu, and it, you would have gotten the same result, but just having that freedom actually does add something. I don't know what it adds, but it's more fun to manually aim and shoot at something than to just, like, pick from a list and say, shoot, dude. So what ends up happening with this gameplay system is just it's it's really unique. I've never played anything quite like where you move units one by one like this, and you could you could use all your action points on one unit. I tell you what, the thing that really drives me, that, that I think makes this game special, is just the sheer variety of missions and mission objectives. Too often I play uh, I play strategy games, I think Fire Emblem's like really egregious of this, where every map is like the same. You know what I mean? It's usually go here, kill all dudes, or take a command post. Occasionally they'll throw in one gimmick, and the gimmick will be something really dumb, like, you know, you can't move very far this time. Uh, like there's sand, and it's harder to cross the sand. You know, something really generic like that. 
or it'll be like, oh, we just threw a bunch of Pegasus Knights. This game, like, the objectives and scenarios are truly unique every time. It is almost like they went into every board meeting and it's like, all right, what do you want to do? And he's like, well, I was thinking, you know, what if there was this mission where, you know, we had to, like, funnel a train in and you had to hit a bunch of switches on the way to funnel the train through and the entire time it's like a blockade wall of the enemy and they're, like, heavily fortified. It's like, good, yeah, I don't even, I don't even know if that works gameplay-wise, stick it in there. Like, that was their philosophy, for sure. Because, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes their missions are, like, they're really unique and an interesting theory, but the exec- either the execution or, in general, the mission idea just doesn't really work in gameplay, like, from a gameplay perspective. But, like, it doesn't matter because everything is so unique that I don't mind. Like, you can- the, the, the overall mission objectives are usually like take command post or kill enemy unit, but the way you get there is just so unique every time. I'm trying to think of some great examples. The, like the train one I mentioned, or there's one mission where it's like take out three guards simultaneously or you fail and they find out. Or there's this other great one where it's you start off and there's a bunch of mortar fire and it's just blanketing the landscape. And you have to cross this big open field on the turns where the mortar isn't firing and then get in these trenches for like trench warfare uh, so that you can be protected from the mortar fire and then also it's like close quarters combat on the way there. There's just really cool unique ideas like that. The problem is is the missions that don't work out, notably there's one in particular that's just really scripted and sometimes the game is a little cryptic with what you're supposed to do because you'll figure things out before the game strictly tells you to, or like tells you that that's something you're supposed to do. Like for example, th I think the worst the worst offender is this mission where there's this giant tank. And it's, it's really the only hard mission in the game. You start off with this giant tank that could just blow you away instantly. And I started off by parking my tank in front of it because everyone kept shouting at the beginning of the story mission like, we need to do whatever we can to stop this tank. If it reaches the end point, it's all over. And I was like, okay, I'll park my tank in front of it. I'll try and stall it. And the enemy, like, unit is not scripted to move if there's any, if, if your tank is blocking its path. So I, I did everything. I took out all of its turrets. I did everything. And then the mission just kind of stopped. Like, nothing happened. I was like, did I win? And then I found that there was ladders I could climb on and it looked like there was more stuff to blow up, but I couldn't figure it out. It wasn't until I moved my tank out of the way that finally it moved forward. And then all of a sudden I was getting story messages like, Oh my gosh, no, now, now we need to take out its reactors in the back and you better shoot down walls to stop it. And it's like, boy, that would have been nice to know at the beginning. <laughs> so there's just some things like that that just aren't explained super well. And there's definitely some missions, like there's another one later on, that's just really slow moving. It's the easiest mission in the game by far. It is an even bigger super tank, and it's just like moving forward very slowly. Like very slowly, and it's the entire mission is just like shoot rocks down to block its path so it goes in a different path. Everything about it just moves so slow. And it's such a boring mission in general, it's literally just move units forward and don't get too close to it. And it just takes forever. And there's missions like that that drag it down, but it's hard to fault it when it's so unique. There's too many games of this variety that just sit on these bland missions or they just, you know, use on repeat the same objectives over and over again, like plant the bomb and then evac or go here take vile i mean i'm like using xcom examples go here take vile evac it's just nice to see see some variety even if it all doesn't pan out for the most part the missions are good they are unique and in general i don't have a ton of complaints with the gameplay oh i do i have a few gripes in general everything i just said don't let it turn you off i mean because i you you guys know me i get really nitpicky, I mean, I analyze, I kind of overanalyze sometimes. This is a fun game. It is absolutely fun. It's something you should check out if strategy games interest you even a little bit. But some of the things that, that drug this game down for me, the UI and menus is, is really bad in between missions. I feel, I feel like you waste a lot of time waiting for menu transitions and just even like buying things and leveling up is something that you're going to do in between every mission. And it, it just takes way longer than it should. Because there's it, there's definitely not, like, a loading time. Um, it just is really 
time consuming about these transitions and and sometimes it just like let me let me buy all the new stuff in like a minute um, and do all this but instead it takes like five minutes to do all of this stuff all of this busy work in between missions and there's just kind of menus buried on top of menus and it's even something is equipping your units like there's a there's a menu to like add units to your squad but then there's a completely separate menu to like change their equipment and their weapons and that is like so cumbersome to just like go back and forth it's it could have been done so much better the other thing is that and this is kind of an inherent aspect i, I wouldn't call it a flaw because i feel like it could be done better but just due to the nature of how the game works you usually end up only focusing on like a few units rather than your entire squad because it's so time consuming to move so many units across the battlefield right because you go into your one unit, you move them forward, and that kind of takes a while. And if you were to do that for like all eight or ten units of your squad, it would take forever. And I think this is kind of amplified by how the class system, how they have the class system broken out. So there's five distinct classes. You have Scout, which is media. It was, I think it was meant to be low damage, uh, high mobility, just scout things out. There's Shock Trooper, which is high defense um, and high damage, but only up close. There is the Lancer, which is your anti-tank unit. There's Sniper, which obvious, and Engineer, which fixes your tanks and uh, as well as like does more healing. What it ends up happening is each each class has like a set length on their movement bar, and the movement bar is so important for a lot of reasons. The Scout has by far the longest movement bar. We're talking like twice as long as any other unit. So really, all it make all it really comes down to is. To save time, you're pretty much only going to use scouts, ever, um, for any real, like, moving forward and pressing the attack, which doesn't make sense in a lot of ways, but they have high enough damage because you just hit headshots. They have low defense, but they, but their range is large enough to where most of the time you don't have to worry about them getting hit by intercept fire. They just kind of rule this game, big time, because of the way... It's, it's annoying on any mission where you have to press forward because of the way that, you know, the deployment system works. Because let's say I deploy my anti-tank unit at the beginning of a mission because I'm not sure where the tanks are going to be yet. They move so slow that by the time I get even a third of the way through the map, it would take so long just to move them forward. And so the easiest way to do that is you send them back to one of your old base camps, evac them, um, and then you can redeploy them at one of the new base camps. But the, even that's time consuming because you got to select them. Um, move over there like th there's certain things that could have been done better like if they were just in the evac point at the start of their turn let me just evac them without like switching into the over like third person view switch back out all of this there's definitely just some things that could have accelerated the process and made it better and just some better balance between the classes because i feel like just due to the sheer volume of how much movement the scouts get compared to everyone else, it just really feels like none of the other units besides tanks are all that consequential outside of very niche situations. The other complaint I have is uh, the ranking system. It's entirely dependent how, on how fast you complete the mission, which basically means use as many cheese tactics as possible, which I know for me, complaining about that is weird, but it really does create a rich get richer scenario because you can get up to like double experience in gold from getting an A rank compared to like the lowest rank. And that's like, if you're already struggling and you're, then you get less rewards. But, the, but here's the thing, the game isn't difficult at all. If you're worried that it looks tough or anything like that, there's really only one mission in the game that's difficult. And that's really only due to not really understanding how it works until you play it once. Everything else is like, can be very much brute forced. Um, or save scummed. I recommend save scumming because brute forcing is just very time consuming. There's very few moments where you'll like lose. And permadeath is n nearly non existent because you have forever to get to your units. Like, and the enemy units are not, they're not like villainous people that will stomp over your units to like, inst to like finish them off and kill them unless they just happen to be in the path that the AI was gonna run in in, in general. So it's it's not a difficult game. The thing, the the part where the difficulty comes in is that it's a, maybe a little bit too random at times. Uh, this mostly applies to like the anti-tank units. Like I can be right behind an enemy tank, and the the spread and the radius of that 
targeting circle is so big, I might still miss my mark, and then that unit dies, and I have to spend, like, another 15 minutes getting another unit there in position to kill it, unless I were to save scum. There's things like that, which are kind of, which are kind of annoying. But other than that, though, I just don't really have many complaints. I, it's a really unique concept for a battle system. I think it laid a very cool foundation. And to be honest, I can't wait for Valkyria Chronicles 4 because I think with just a few tweaks to this system to maybe streamline it, make it a little bit snappier, a little bit quicker, this could be something so special. And there's something about the story and the characters that were just heartwarming and the combat was interesting, the sit combat situations were extra interesting, some of the music is fantastic, I believe part of it was done by the, uh, by the guy who did like the Final Fantasy Tactics music slash Vagrant Story, like those kind of games, if you like that kind of sound, this game has it. Now luckily you have a lot of options to play this game. Uh, it was originally released on the PS3 back in the day, pretty early in the life cycle actually, but it's since gotten a remaster for PS4 I believe, and it's also, that remaster is also, also available on PC, which is the version I played. If you are playing on PC, a few things to note. If you're running Windows 10 uh, with the latest updates, some of the things broke a little bit, so you're going to want to hit a few compatibility mode things. So if you're getting the taskbar at the bottom of the screen, you're want to go going to want to go to the EXE, hit properties, go to compatibility, set it for compatibility with Windows 8, and disable full screen optimizations, I believe. If you're getting issues with the sound, this is probably the biggest thing that's been broken. If you are getting issues with the sound when you kill an enemy, the best advice I can give you is select a specific audio device in the launcher settings. That finally fixed it for me, but some people have said that that hasn't been good enough for them, so hopefully there's a fix for that at some point, because that is kind of a bummer. Other than that though, is this a game you should check out? Absolutely yes. It's widely available. If you're into strategy games, it's worth a play just for like the sheer uniqueness of it. If you're really turned off by like an anime aesthetic and maybe some cheesy character moments, maybe it maybe you know it won't be for you. But I think that this is definitely a special game. I'm not gonna say it's like a be all end all. Like this is one of the best games of all time. It has flaws. It has it has it has a lot of flaws in a lot of ways. But it's just got this charm to it that makes it really easy to overlook those flaws, whereas other games probably would have been crippled by these flaws. You know, if you've played the game before, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this review and you're interested in other ones like it, I got a whole playlist in the description uh, of other reviews I've done. Until next time, thank you guys so much. Later.